Okay, let's turn that off. Hi, everybody. Little Vintage Me just had her premiere, so I waited a few minutes for that to end before I started. Put that in live chat. Hello. Oh, I love those swizzle sticks you had. Those were pretty cool looking. Oh. Yeah, it just popped up that your uh, that little vintage me sixty four is live. So my hands are freezing. That's why I'm rubbing them together. Um, so I thought, well, while I'm trying to set up my phone for Streamyard, I'll stop on in. At least I caught the tail end of it. I need to find my gloves that have uh, their fingerless so I can still do stuff and keep my hands warm. It's not a sale tonight. It's a, it's a chat and an unboxing because, because of the fact that stuff from all three estates has kind of gotten all mixed up. When I get to a box, I don't always know what's in it. So it's a mystery <laughs> for all of us. So, so Tina, sometimes um, for January and February, I was doing alternating between a live sale and then an unboxing. And, uh, and I honestly am not sure what's going to happen for next month, because right now we're dealing with the fact that our heater died. And, you know, <laughs> if we don't get something figured out soon, I've been trying for months to, uh, to get a way to get that heater replaced. And so, so good. Yeah, Tina, sit back, have some fun. You know, it probably won't be until, you know, too long cause it's freezing here. <laughs> that window on that side uh, doesn't fit in right. It was put in by a company called Window Pro and they supposedly lifetime guarantee the window, but I've no idea where my mother put the paperwork. And so they don't meet up, like the window should meet up like this to lock. Well, they don't, they're, they're like, they're off. So it won't lock. So the top slides down. Now we had it all the way up and then this area got filled in a little bit and now I can't get to it. So with no, and the radiator is right over there. <laughs> what three oh, it's a little more than three four feet away from me but you know we know we eat her <laughs> so we knew it was on its last legs but we were really hoping it would last to the end of march because i've tried everything i could um so it's it's been a real challenge so hi katie Honey, I hope you're feeling better. I have a, what did I do with it? I have a present to do. I'm going to put it in tomorrow morning's mail to make you feel better. But look what I found. It's a magnet, but isn't that an adorable little pug? I thought you'd like that, Katie. Because it just reminded me of Louie. So I thought you'd like that. So, yeah, it, it gets to my hands when they're cold because the knuckles start to hurt from the arthritis in my hands. So, but I'm more worried about Katie. <laughs> I'm used to my hands hurting all winter, but, but Katie's not been feeling good. So, <sighs> So how has everybody been? I mean, some of you, uh, I don't know if too many are in Texas um, that are on my night owl sales. But uh, Sharon, I have no idea when I'm getting heat. I really don't know. I Mike finally took me shopping to Walmart because he's like, you have to get out of the house. You're about ready to lose your. So and he was right. I mean, at that point, I had already popped uh, two Xanax, which is supposed to be for emergencies. 
I don't think my pipes will freeze because I'm in Pennsylvania uh, below Philadelphia. Now, tonight is supposed to get down to 36 degrees. That's still above freezing. Um, today hit, I think hit 50. It got to the point where it was warmer outside than it was in the house. So we had some windows open trying to pull some of that heat in. Um, so for the next couple of days, it sh it's just going to be cold and it shouldn't freeze any pipes. But, you know, we still have to get through March. And that could still mean some cold nights. Um, they, my heater is very old in a damp basement. And they had fixed it as far as they could. And then um, told me, well, you got to use it at your own risk. So I spent, now that was in August. And I spent all this time trying to get financial help to replace it. And they wouldn't do financing. They wouldn't because my credit's not great. And then uh, I couldn't even get uh, money from the house because there's a lien on the house from an old debt. So I couldn't, I couldn't use the house as collateral for anything either. I know, Tia Fane, what the hell is going on with February, right? Am I right? February for so many people, like we got through January and a lot of people weren't having too bad a January. They felt optimistic. February for a lot of the customers that I see at Wawa, for a lot of friends of mine, for myself, February has been absolute crap. <laughs> Sharon C., no, I don't have an electric blanket. I do, however, have a heating pad. And you know, how bad it was last night. I went upstairs and I do have an electric heater in my room, but I don't, I'll let it heat up the room. And then I have two wool blankets and a fleece on my bed. So that usually in flannel pajamas, flannel sheets, that usually will keep me warm, but I need to get that little bit of an edge off. Um, so I'll heat the room up a little bit, or at least let that little oil filled space heater get heat up. And then I'll go to bed. And that's usually enough for me um, at night and what I'm used to. Because my ha my room's on the north side of the house and has no heat anyway. Because it leaked when I was, I don't know, in my, well, before my father died. And I was 30 when dad died. So sometime in my 20s. And his answer was not to fix the leak. It was to turn that radiator off. So... I don't know if a GoFundMe would work or not. I've I've tried that. I tried that to get the tree down. And um, I ended up with $120. <laughs> it helped. It did go towards the tree. But I, I don't know if a GoFundMe would do it. I didn't, I didn't have a YouTube channel then. But you guys help pay for stuff just by buying stuff. So, but yeah, I am thankful. I'm not in Texas. I'm used to the cold. It is not so bitter cold as it is in Texas. I still have electric. I still have gas. I don't have an oven, so I can't use that to heat things up. But, um, you know, I did finally find after numerous, let me transfer you to this person, to that person, to another person, to whatever, getting through the maze of lie heap has been a nightmare um, because even before this, I'd call them and I'd either get somebody who would tell me we don't replace heaters. We just do oil. That's not true, but you've got to actually get somebody. Um, I did finally, after several hours, I, I lost track after hour number four um, of call getting disconnected, calling back, going through the whole rigmarole again and each person you have to explain to them that, you know, because their first thing is, well, why didn't you buy a new one on what? We just did my taxes. I made $9,000 working for Wawa last year. That's not paying for a heater. So, <sighs> so it's been, <laughs> it's not like I haven't been trying and haven't been looking. And you have to repeat it to every person as you go through that chain. And they finally, somebody sent me a link for the crisis form, which you can't find on their website. So that finally got put in late this afternoon. Well, 
early afternoon after spending the entire morning playing merry-go-round phone calls. Oh, TFN, you're still in partial lockdown? We kind of are. Like, it's very limited how many people you can have in your place. The hard part is, is that it's hard to, to monitor that and keep it. Some places kind of given up. <laughs> so you're only supposed to have X number of people. Like my Wawa, you're only supposed to have 16 people in the building. Well, if 10 staff are there, that's kind of crazy. Your small, oh, you got your small rooster vinegar jar. <laughs> your sister cuts your hair. I wouldn't trust my sister to cut my hair. <laughs> now, my hair, my hair could, it's getting long in the back. It could use to get a proper layering, but. My hair used to be down here, and then when they told me that the heater needed to frozen, I'm like, well, there it goes getting a perm, so I have curls again. So I chopped it all off. <laughs> oh, you're seeing smoke? It's peppermint tea. It's peppermint tea. So, yeah, so you're seeing the smoke. The ghost is on the third floor, hon. He's not down here. <laughs> Yeah, the the candy Christie, the ghost, the ghost isn't on the first floor. He's on the third. He walks down the upstairs hallway and he goes into the attic. I've seen him. Two nieces have seen him. We've all grew up here in footsteps. So yeah, no, he's not down here. <laughs> yeah, Sharon, I I thought I'd be getting to stuff and and then this hit so this this has not been fun <laughs> but i did find some interesting things so and i don't i don't know how long we'll be on tonight because the fact that it's cold in this room now in the afternoon during the daytime it's not so bad because this is the south side of the house so the, the wall actually heats up the brick wall heats up from the sunlight but during the night it's getting cold in here so yeah annie christy there is a there is a video that shows the inside of the attic and then and then of course you see warehouse 13 here mike got uh pulled a box from the front end i have no idea it's only a little office depot box it says dog porcelain books ebay i have no idea what's in there <laughs> local d a e o c what is that oh you love the antique postcards good there may be more of those i found some magnets i was going through a desk drawer which is how i found that one for that i'm sending katie with the little pug because the pug looks like louie and God, this one's got to be from the 80s because it was that pop art. Remember that comic book pop art that came around? And it says, darling, let's share it all. Our dreams, our desires, our deepest thoughts, the vacuuming, the laundry, the cooking, the cleaning. Oh, if only. What do I have to do to get a plumber or a roofer or an electric? Let's not do it down that road. So, so that was a fun little surprise. And uh, I found, hi, Lavish Mango. I found this one it says, an Irishman is never drunk as long as he can hold on to a blade of grass and not fall off the face of the earth. Who remembers magnets like this from the 70s? You know, where it's it's all raised up and then they like put a layer of uh so it's kind of dimensional and then they just put a layer of ink over the words but that one's from the 70s this one's probably from the 70s bartenders are better lovers i don't know we used to we used to pick these up at every little you know little gas station store at the 
They used to be on um, tourist traps. You know, it's really kind of funny. So, you know, if anybody's really interested in one of these magnets, shoot me an email, you know. <laughs> so, hello, Nate. How's our possum? Hi, hey, sweetie. Uh, at least where you're at's warm. <laughs> What's the name? Dere oh, Dina. Dina, yeah. It was expensive getting that big tree down. Um, and that was that was my big goal of 2020. And everything I made for my first live sales went towards that tree. And my sister, bless her heart, paid for the rest. So I managed to get together half. And she put up the other half. And it was about the same price. Because that tree was massive. Absolutely massive. I found these and I think I'll pass these along too. They're, they were from Hallmark Cards. And they're all magnets. But they're cute little cup and saucers. I mean the only one I really super like is the yellow one. I really do like the yellow one. So I thought, you know, time and taste change. So, you know, I'll pass these along. <laughs> and so if if there nobody claims them tonight i'll probably put them in the live sale there will be a live sale next week well should be <laughs> should be <laughs> heat or no heat well they'll have to be <laughs> so um so next week will be the live sale and that's when I'll sell what I have for Easter. I'll, now, I think you've seen one thing. That didn't sound good at all. So I know, um, I know some of you, if you saw the video of being at the Pensbury Antique Mall, you saw these, these great vintage picks. I have them. I have some vintage Easter postcards. I found this. She's adorable. She's made in Japan. I love that she's got this little apron on her, but she's a bank. So we have Mama Bunny. And I have a Peter Rabbit book. And I have a Ten Rabbits book from Wonder Books. I don't know the year. I haven't looked it up yet. And then I found, I found a vintage postcard, which is really cool looking. And then I found a couple of vintage Easter cards, which, you know, that, that was a surprise to find those. So on next week's sale, whatever little bits I can find for Easter, because Easter, I looked at, Misty said something on hers about Easter being in March and early this year. So I looked it up and it's at the end of the month. So I will make sure I have. Oh, get in there. Put that over there. Anything I have for Easter, I'll make sure I have for next week for a live sale. So. Oh, Miss Pamela's merchandises. Will I read the Irish magnet again? Sure. An Irishman is never drunk as long as he can hold on to a blade of grass and not fall off the face of the earth. Not quite an Irish brogue, but it'll do. <laughs> That's all right, Katie. You just listen and take it easy. So... But yeah, those were those were fun. He also found the bag that had these in. Check these out. It is a sample package box of Pampers. Back when it says instead of a diaper, Pampers. But where is the spot where it says um no plastic pants needed. Can you see that? 
So this is from the 60s, and I used to know what year. It doesn't have it on it. Now, this was the sample pack that they would hand out in the hospital. This was not what was on the shelves to buy. So I ended up, is that a year? No, it's just a code number. Darn. I ended up with an entire case and a half of these from the attic of um, a house clean out. And they, they just throw them away. Well, there's nothing wrong with them. So some of them I had donated to, um, because they're for newborns, um, babies six to 11 pounds. Well, it's six pounds. You know, that, that could be a preemie. So I had donated some, anything where the box wasn't, wasn't in great shape. But the rest I had been putting up on eBay. And I've kind of killed my own market because when I did it, the first ones went for close to $100. And then the prices started getting lower and lower because there are people who collect pamper stuff. And I kind of flooded the market. But that was a couple of years ago. So I think I could probably do more. And there's at least, this is just two boxes of them. There's at least like six more boxes, seven more boxes at the other end. <laughs> So that, that was a surprise. I was like, well, might as well. Because they were put out in the, no, with no more plastic pants. They were put out um, sometime in the early 60s. And the first way they got them out, that of course, they advertised them that, hey, look, we have these things called these diapers that actually have the plastic lining on the outside. So you don't need plastic pants anymore. And that was their big advertising thing. Cause with cloth diapers, you have to have that little plastic pants to go over the diaper. And with these, you didn't have that. So that was their big advertising about it. But the fastest way that they marketed it was to donate it to a bunch of hospitals so they could give free boxes of them away to brand new mothers when the kid when they were taking the baby home. So let's see what's in the <laughs> you know if if Nate ever made it to the states, I think there'd be uh, you would have your pick of places to stay. Not here. Sorry, love. Much as I would like to have my possum here. Um, there's no room in that. There's no room at this inn at the moment. <laughs> but I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> Let's see. What else? Oh, wait. That's, that's the card for Katie. So I found this. And I don't know if anybody would be interested in this. Remember I had done the video of the craft catalog, the Sears craft catalog. Well, I found this tucked in between some old magazines and it's Hanover house. 372 new ideas for better living from Hanover house. I don't know who they are. <laughs> I've never heard of them, but it kind of, Reminds me of, um, oh, I can't think of the name now. Where it's always kind of like little tchotchke, plasticky stuff. I'm trying to lift the flap without ripping the page. Because the original Hanover House was in Hanover, Pennsylvania, it says. Do we have a date on this order form? Oh, wow, the shipping. Up to $3 for your order? Just add $0.35 cents for shipping. you got to be kidding. <laughs> but it, it seems like it's all black and white, and I can't think of the name. There's a catalog where you still get this kind of stuff. You know, little things to help at home. It's a pity they're all black and white, though. Hey, look, they have a picture of a lipstick lady. I used to wonder, where did people get those from? 
they show up every once in a while. Some of the live sales. Hanover House, your key to better living. But all the picks are in black and white. So I don't know if anybody would want this. I mean, it is kind of neat. And, and considering that, like, the lipstick lady is in there. And if you look at some of the hairstyles for the pictures they use, um, you know, I would say this thing's from the 50s sometime. And, you know, if you're interested, shoot me an email. I have far more fun ones that I have to make videos of. Come on, tuck you in there. Hey, I can't find a date on that. Now, these will be in the live sale. I found some 1970s vintage wrapping paper. Tell me that is not the 70s. Now, on my phone, my phone makes these look like they're orange to me, but those are little pink. Those are pink little dots. So I have, would have that, and I'd put it with this one. Isn't that cute? These are so cute. Harriet Carter catalog, yes. Harriet Carter, that's probably the one. This was probably for a baby shower, too, but all I can think of is that song. Um, I think it's from the Disney Alice in Wonderland about tick, tick, tock, little April showers. And then this one. This one cracked me up. I really like this one because if you do miniature work or scrapbooking, you've got a lot of stuff to pick from. Uh-oh. Hang on. I forgot to plug the phone in, and now it's telling me my battery's dying. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. But look at all the teeny tinies. And there's there's a there's an owl there. There was another. There's there's owls up here. There's a diploma. Where's the diploma? There's a diploma. You know, it's really pretty cool. It was very 1970s paper. So, and it looks like half, half the sheet is there. So I would probably make that one lot. Just was in the top of the closet. We were working on the, um, yesterday we were working on the uh, master bedroom that my son has. And there was a box that said wrapping paper. So I checked it out and found some of this vintage stuff hiding in it. Now, this is a bigger sheet of that same one with the little babies. This is absolutely adorable. I really like that. Kind of want to frame that. Now, it was with this one. Now, this one has tape and stuff on it. It's a fairly big sheet. And you could tell my mother cut part of it off to use on a smaller package. So she must have saved it. But look at these bunny rabbits. Isn't that the most cutest little picture? That's so adorable. That's absolutely adorable. So they will be in the live sale next week. And then I found this. Now, this. There was um, a discussion one night, and I don't know if it was on my channel or if it was in the chat with somebody else, about the fact that old wallpaper and old wrapping paper, that the older you get, the thinner it was, that it was more like tissue paper in the 40s. I have a single full sheet of 1940s paper. And I'll, I don't see a maker's mark, but it's circus. It's this great circus paper. And, and you've got, it's a long repeat because it goes, the repeat is, is to here. 
this is all one thing. So the repeat is a lot bigger. But yeah, you just, you don't find this. And the reason, like I say, it's not tissue paper is that when you handle it, when you see how it's printed, it is in no way like tissue paper. It's just, it's a little thicker. It's definitely was printed on. And I grew up with this stuff. My great aunts had a stash of paper that they would use. And so every once in a while, there'd be this really old 1940s paper that they'd use on your present. <laughs> of course, my mom with six kids saved all the paper. But this one is a full sheet. So to find this was just amazing to me that this was way in the bottom of this. Then the box was only this deep. But this was in the bottom hiding there. So, wow. <laughs> That was awesome. Who is doing a fundraiser for another person? Because if there's a fundraiser for somebody, you go right ahead and put the link in. Because so many people are hurting. I mean, yeah, I'm cold, but there are so, so many people in Texas that are in far worse shape. And through the whole middle of the country. The whole middle of the country got nailed with that polar vortex thing. A wrapping paper repurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Dawn's channel. I don't know who that is, though. Is that the right one? Yeah, because, you know, if you have well water and your pump goes, then you have no water and you can't go without water. You can figure out ways to stay warm. You can't, well, for a little while anyway, but if you can't without water, water is a big problem. Yes, please, because I'm about done my peppermint tea and it's it's getting cold. My hand, I keep grabbing my hands because my hands are cold. My son came down and is checking on me. Oh, God. Benefit auction for Lisa Jenkins, part two. Well, okay. I'm going to subscribe there so that I can backtrack and see that later. Good. <sighs> we'll find a way to get her to 2000 I may not have much, but even if I could just send $5 on a PayPal um, just as a donation, it'd be something. Yes, I know. I, I need seven grand for a heater, but, you know, we'll figure something out. But, you know, you can't live without water. You can't. The human body can only go four days with no water, and then you start having problems. Less if you're in an area that's really hot and dry. So, oof, hands are cold. Okay. So, let's do the box. Let's see what's in it. Like I said, he picked this out. I have no idea. No idea what's in this. Oh. What is that? There's something in the side. Records. Oh, this is right up Katie's alley. It's records, though. They're, I don't think they're Katie's kind of records. Two Sesame Street records. Five people in my family and the people in your neighborhood. They're 45s. Cross at the green and bus stop. 1977. And 1976. Let's see. I'm a first generation Sesame Street baby. Ooh, look really good. I don't see any scratches. I don't see a lot of signs of wear. They don't have a sleeve inside, though. 
But they are nice and shiny like you want them to be. No scratches. Oh, wow. Come on, come on. In you go. Yep, I can remember on Sesame Street, Mr. Hooper, they won an Emmy Award for how they handled Mr. Hooper's passing away. And you know that the, the corporation that now runs Sesame Street, they won't release that one episode. It just kills me because that episode would help so many children that have lost someone. And I searched for it. I tried finding it when, when Michael lost his mother and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, but I remember the very first big bird who scared the crap out of me. And they found that he scared most of the children because here was this giant bird with a very pointy head and just three little feathers out the top. Now, that's basically big bird without the rough of feathers, which is how he originally looked. And he's creepy as could be. Then they put the rough of feathers around him and it made him far more relatable because Big Bird's supposed to only be about like the age of a five-year-old. That's why he asks. He's there to ask all the questions that the children would want to know. But he was creepy in the very beginning. <laughs> so I, I want a shirt that says I'm a first. I saw somebody wearing one once and I never found out where they got it. Then it said I'm a first generation Sesame Street baby. And for those of us that are first generation Sesame Street babies, we also grew up watching the electric company, a lot of us. Because I remember that too. Your sister passed when you were seven. Michael's mother passed when he was seven, but I've had custody since he was two. But his dad's still around, which is a good thing. I, however, was an orphan by 41, so... I worry sometimes he'll be younger than that when uh, anything happens to his dad. You know, though, they tell you sometimes don't talk about it. But at the same time, if you don't, then they don't know how to handle it because nobody's talking to them. And that's not a good thing. It is hard for a seven-year-old. Uh, my first taste of losing somebody was when my grandfather died and I was 10. And that, that I was lucky in that I had a mom who understood that you need to talk to the kids about it. You know, you just don't say they've gone away for a while or something. It's just, it's, it's hard. Especially if you don't, if you've never grown up, like, if you've never grown up, on a farm or near animals where, you know, their lifespan is a lot shorter than when it happened the first time it happens to a person, it really can be very traumatic for you. Yeah. And then when it's not discussed, it makes it even worse. My grandmother, my dad's mother for years set the table with an empty place at the table. And I never understood what that was about not at all as a young kid had no clue because my dad's father died long before i was born he died in his 50s but he had throat cancer and lung cancer i'll set that over there but um he was older too he was older than my grandmother they were from up around Wilkesbury, PA, and moved down here to get away from what he called the upstate hick mentality. <laughs> Everybody went bonkers over the fact that they were cousins. Now, before you freak out about that, you have to understand they weren't first cousins, they weren't second cousins, they weren't even third cousins. They're fourth cousins. Now, each generation removes, that's what is they say, fourth cousin removed. Um, your fourth cousin means that four generations above you 
you have a common ancestor. So you're past your parents, you're past your grandparents, you're past your great grandparents. At four, you're up to your great great grandparents. I wouldn't even know any of my fourth cousins. I don't know where they are. My great great grandfather fought in the Civil War. I have no idea where any of the cousins from that generation are. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Do you believe that doctors in the 50s, if you lost a baby, uh, you know, just you'll get over it when you have another one. You don't get over that. No. And back then, you know, you didn't dare punch the doctor, but. Nate, why do I know Lindy Chamberlain? Why do I know that name? It may not be a good name to know. So, see, this is, so apparently this box had to be something I looked at once before. Yeah, I'm just switching gears there. <laughs> yeah, you don't ever get over that. Oh, ooh. Pretty. And he's got, he's got a number. I'll have to look that up. See if he's Napco or Lefton. What a face. Wow. And you know, I have a big boxer on my eBay store that I haven't been able to sell. And it's, it's like, it's the big boxer is like this tall. It's a big thing. Oh, the dingo's got my baby. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Annie P. Growing up, my best friend was an uncle the minute he was born. He actually had a nephew who was a couple weeks older than him. That's a great boxer. Hyacinth, you should go look up my eBay store. <laughs> There's a bigger boxer on there. Let's see. Slim wrapped in a bag. I need I need to do uh I wonder if these are from the collection from my great aunt had a dog collection. This is a bank, and there's some paint loss on the back, but it's three St. Bernards. Look at what the barrel has instead of whiskey. <laughs> And it says Japan on the bottom. That's cool. Oh, my back. my back. The heck was that? <laughs> I look up and I, my phone is all just black. Let's see. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. What the hell? The Wi-Fi just went. Fuck. Really? Now it's telling me my site can't be reached. You're offline. Check for connection. My internet's just gone down. So I can't see my own feed. My little light is blinking at me. How do I fix this? <laughs> You see me. I can't see me. I apparently have no Wi-Fi. It's just blinking at me. Hey, Mike. Um, How do you fix the Wi-Fi, the router? 
Well, because it, it was blinking at me and stopped. And I, it says I have no connection to the Internet. But lo, the, according to the phone, they can see me and they can hear me. Oh, there goes my stream yards almost blacking out again. So I don't know what it's doing because now it's blinking the Wi Fi signal. It's having issues. It is having issues. So, you know, there's not really much. Yeah. The best you can so do I went, is unplug it, which will take all of it away. So. Oh, I don't want to do that. So let's not unplug it. If they could see me through StreamYard, I'll just, because that's probably taken through data. This is hard as a rock, so you're not getting that plug out of there. The, the rubber says something on the rubber, but that hardened up. But that's pretty cool. Well, you guys can still see me. I'll keep going, and I'll just have a harder time reading the chat. Another boxer. This has got to be stuff from my great aunt's collection of boxers. Well, she had more than boxers. She had all kinds of dogs. There's no, there's some crazing on that. And no maker's mark. Will you let me back into YouTube yet? No. Still telling me I'm offline. So now you see what my, since the last sale, now you see what my week's been like. And they had me work overnight for seven hours and that just blew my knee i'm not selling tonight tonight is an unboxing we're seeing what's in a box thank you yeah the wi-fi is now flashing red the only thing i could do is unplug it let it reset the router hmm everything seems connected there's no off switch for this thing no no off switch. Oh, oh, wait. Everything's still connected. Maybe. Yay. Well, it's hard for me to read the chat on my phone. So, <laughs> so it's easier to read it on there. I've got two little spaniels. You know, at this point, I will I may have to. Usually I put all these little dog figurines or animals up on eBay, I may have to have an animal sale. <laughs> oh, this is cool. How do I get it? So you guys can see this. Where is this made in? I can't, I can't tell. Can't read that that well. I can't read it. Maybe Japan? Oh, I wish I had. Do I have the little flashlight or did I leave it? This has a lithophane in the bottom or whatever you call them. No, we don't want that. Let's see if it shows for you guys. You see them? There we go. Isn't that cool? Now it says it's I think I don't think that's English. I don't know what that says. I think it's I don't think it's English. But that was kind of cool that that has uh that that little boy down in there. That's kind of cool. So it's some kind of souvenir piece. Put them over there. When uh, Annie Allen, Annie Floss, when Annie Floss died, what, not only was there this massive salt and pepper shaker collection, there was a very large dog figurine collection. And I'm pretty sure, now this says made in Japan. Look at the size of him. 
I'm pretty sure these are from her collection. Because nobody really wanted them, and I know I had gotten quite a few, and a lot of them I'd had packed for a long while. His little tail comes all the way around, where it stops right there on his foot. Isn't that cute? The 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 funniest, the only spots that are kind of the same is that he's got one on each cheek, which is not a spot they tend to have spots. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 the few times I've put a Dalmatian up on eBay, they've done really well. Certain breeds do really well. So, I'm sorry I'm killing you with the dogs. <laughs> a lot of dogs. I'll put that one up there. Oh, wow. <sighs> Definitely from her. So this would have been... It's got some marks on the back. She had a big scrapbook that was all old postcards and cutouts of pictures of dogs. So that's from that. But this says... Jeff and Teddy. And they're looking out the door. Now, that's the original porch door to the house on Amos Land Road in Norwood. Jeff and Teddy. Now, I don't remember Teddy. And I'm not sure I remember Jeff. She, They had sweet, they had some very sweet, um, big spaniels when I was growing up, when I was real little. And uh, so that's that's got to be them. What's this? This says it's a map. Map one. That says Cardinal O'Hara High School. I'm guessing it's Delaware County. Larkin's Corner, Green Ridge, Upland, Chester. This is a map of Delaware County. Oh, it's a map of only part of Delaware County. This is an advertising piece. Come on, you little bugger, open up. Come on. So you have map one and map two, and it's all the area that that particular company covered, which is, well, it's, it's a, it's a, hmm. So it's kind of my area of Chester and Upland and Parkside. Brookhaven, Nether Providence, Aston, and then out towards Chester County. So I will probably hang on to that and see if the um, either the Delaware County Historical Society or the Chester Historical Society would want that. So I'd hang on to that with them. This looks cool. Just look at the cover. All those little stars. That looks great. So somebody wrote a comment in the top. Misfortune is a filter which separates sincere friends from scum. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, it's the Rubiat of Om Kayam. Done by Gerald's. With illustrations, oh, these are nice. With special illustrations. These are all woodblock. Let's not show that one. I don't want to be demonetized when I can get when I actually am there. They are all special woodblock illustrations. Wow. Look at the borders around this. Even the borders, they're huge. And these are all decorated. I have to look this up and see. 
This book is set in Baskerville type and is printed on special wove paper. Now, there's a signature in the back that says 1955. Signature in the front says 1955. So, wow. I'll have to look that up, see what that's about. A couple other books here. Oh, and I, I did get a black light. And I checked the glass that I have sitting up there and none of it glows. I was hoping. Oi, oi, what are you? Critical and Experimental Commentary, Volume 4. Commentary on what? Ooh, 1868. Of the Old and New Testaments, printed in Glasgow, 1864. Wow. It is Jeremiah to Malachi by the Reverend A.R. Fawcett A.M. What's an AM? I know a DD. DD is Doctor of Divinity. But I don't know what an AM of St. Cuthbert's York. I don't know what that means. Well, okay, so the binding is loose. It has the binding has split from the covers. But it's it's a lot of text. I'm I'm trying to be real careful with this one. I don't see any plates inside. It's a lot of theology text. Wow. All right. Let's put you back in the box. And that way I can put the books back in the box. This is a tiny little spoon. Indianapolis Motor Speedway 500. That's probably from a family vacation. We went there. Hey, isn't this one of those kind of knitting things? It makes a long rope. You you or you put the loops around and and then it comes out down here. Now he's got some paint loss going on. And he's kind of different. That's very different. I spent five years in Southern Baptist run Christian schools. I had a lot of theology and my friends all went to St. James Catholic boys school. And even Daria who didn't go to a Catholic school, Daria was Catholic. So I, we grew up doing our theology homework together. Usually I ended up writing some of their theology homework. Ah. <sighs> Oh, a thumbs up? That's a good point, because I haven't thumbed up my own video. There we go. <laughs> we have the Biblical Treasury. Collection of scripture illustrations for the use of Sunday school teachers and Bible students. Printed by the Sunday School Union. Now... There's a date that says 1803 in that seal, but I don't know if that's the date of the union or the date of the printing, but the printing was in London. And judging from, okay, so this is, Im this is impressed and then they cover it with gold. They did the same thing on the spine. I would say, computer, what the devil are you doing? Uh, it's quite, and then, and then another thing you could tell for really old books is the size of the print is usually pretty tiny. So I would not be surprised if this book is from the 1800s. Now, here's one of the illustrations. Now, even that illustration style is very fine lines. It would have been an engraving on a brass plate. So I would say this book is definitely from the 1800s. 
because a lot of the pictures were like that. A lot of the pictures would be from an engraved copper plate. Oh, what's the birdie? I saw a bird go by. And, and that's why they'd have a lot of fine lines. They didn't really reproduce super well. Like this one, when you see it up close, there's a ton of tiny little lines. But then when they reprint it, the wings kind of look almost like a black blob. And it's because they couldn't quite get it over. Now that would be really pretty cool. They've got things like the history of writing in the front. Um, and they've, they've found ways to like make it uh, with the time. Like there's one here and it says lesson 580, the love of Christ. And then it says, in the year 1848, out in Italy, where the field of Navarra was fought, there were dreadful scenes of, and it goes on from there. So a lot of them, they've tried to make them what would have been contemporary. There's a story of the spendthrift turn, and it's all about contemporary stuff, and then they tie it in with a Bible verse at the end. That would be useful for a Sunday school teacher, even if you're teaching adults. Now, oh, I have two copies of, these are also 1800s, Pelobit's Select Notes on International Lessons. This is from 1880. This one's from 1886. And that's lost into the cover. They've done the gilding on the title there. Oh, now this one has lost the end paper page. So you go right into the maps in the front. Bible class, PSS Philadelphia. Whoever did that. I don't. Oh, well, there was a picture. And the tiny print, as usual. Now, this has a whole page for the fourth quarter. Isn't that cool? Wow. That was harsh for your, your grandmother. I had a priest come out of the boys' school one time asking me why two girls were standing outside, you know, waiting for the boys to let out. And we told him that we were there for Mike Donovan and we went to walk home with him because we had off from school and he didn't. And so he just stood there talking to us. And he was talking to me a lot more because Daria didn't open her mouth too much. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to ask, because none of the guys had enough nerve to ask this priest. His name was Father Large. And I asked him, if God is all-powerful, can he make a rock so big that he himself can't lift it? This guy was from Ireland. He didn't bat an eyelash. He just looked at me and went, well, it depends the mood he's in on that day. And if you don't stop listening to George Carlin, I'm going to tell your mother. Okay, <laughs> but my mother was listening to George Carlin right along with me. <laughs> this is a neat engraving. Isn't that awesome? In the 1880s, that kind of overlap of images was very common and came out of the aesthetic movement of Oscar Wilde. And you would see a lot of artwork on postcards and other things where they would oh well that's different um where they would overlap images like that there's a newspaper clipping glued in from may 6 1886 that's kind of different so it's oh it's in pretty good shape too though the other one's the same way huh I'll have to look, do some research on those and see what I've got there. So. Ooh. All right. I will be right back. 
this cold weather sucks. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but when you've been drinking hot drinks all evening, you know. <laughs> oh. But Linda, honey, what happened that you lost your vision last week in one eye? I have been there, done that. It's scary. Mine was a eye infection. And then after a week, it jumped to the other eye. So I actually spent two weeks totally blinded, but it's a little nerve wracking when that happens. But, oh my goodness. You have me on subs. Oh, I'm at 570 now. Well, oh, that's cool. That is very cool. 570 subs. Okay. See what it is. Carefully wrapped in paper. And is it? Oh, I remember this one. Okay, so I know this was one of mine because I had this sent to me as a Valentine one year because it's a little planter. Now, it is made of resin, but he's just so cute. And he's got his little sweater on, and he's got his little basket of flowers, and he's so doggone cute. And I've always wanted to get, like, a white Scotty dog. And, uh, so he's a cutie. Sweater dogs with flower basket. So I think he will probably be in the live sale next week. Oh, Belinda. I'm sorry about that. My brother-in-law has only got vision in one eye. He lost his to um, the retina detached in his 20s. I don't know if there was an injury or an accident or something. I don't know. Um, he's had to a long time to adjust for it. But with only one eye, your depth perception gets really wonky. And he, when he has to pour anything, he holds a glass like this and he'll stick his finger down and stop. Well, when he feels the water hit his finger, then he knows to stop pouring the glass because he, with only one eye, you lose all your depth perception. And I used to ask him, why was he doing that? And then he finally told me. He's, Phyllis is going to be, Phyllis turned 70, so I guess Bob's 73 now or 72. It's hard to imagine all my siblings are starting to hit in their 70s now. Well, the older two are anyway. <gasps> this was one of my mom's. 
This was a planter. It's got a little bit of wear here. Now that's not chipping. That's that's the rough edge. There's glaze over top of that. That's how it was made. But in a cutie, look at that face. <gasps> Just look at that face. Isn't that so cute? Such a cutie. And he's a planter. Oh. He's a cutie. Oh, Belinda, honey, that's okay. We're a good community, man. We watch, we, we give each other a chance to have an ear out for you. But it, it will take a lot of getting used to. Because your, your depth perception will be the, the biggest adjustment you have. And it's going to affect you on stairs, walking off a curb, how you pour drinks, when you go to reach for things. It's going to take some getting used to for driving because he does drive, but it, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot of getting used to and readjusting. That seems to have several little things in it. Let's sit that there. Oh, we're almost done. I don't know how cold it is in my house. I know I saw it go by and I didn't say because I don't actually know. I don't think I want to know. I do know it got warmer outside today. If you're what I think you are, why are you here? No, you're not the one I think you are. Okay. He's had some issues. I don't see a tail. Yeah, no tail. He was one of the ones from my great aunt. So he's got, and I'll try to fix that before I put him up on the live sale. So the tip of his tail is broken off. And you can see some glue residue sticking up. And he's, his tail's been docked. <laughs> Poor baby's lost the tip of his tail. But he's a cute, I mean, he's looking up at you. So how can I make you guys see that? There we go. Look at the eyes. So when he's like this, he's looking right up at you. He's so adorable. Even with the tail being docked like that, with the tail being broken off. At least the ear is on there. It's just the that glue residue is a little up there. But what a face. Isn't that adorable? Oh. So that's another one from Annie Floss's collection of dogs. Macular degeneration. Um... Who about that's losing her sight for the same reason? Dame Judy Dench, the actress. Um, she just did an interview with somebody today. I saw the notice for it that she is she's pretty much lost most of her sight to macular degeneration, and she's still acting. She's do fine ways around it. <laughs> Belinda wants all the animals. <laughs> well, like I said, in my in my uh, eBay store, I have a I have a big sad hound dog decanter, and I have a um a boxer, big boxer, beautiful looking boxer. They haven't. I may pull. I may pull them. Still awake for a little while, Philly Flipper. Oh wow, wow! Y'all are gonna love this. Now it's missing one of the chains. One of the chains is on one of the pups. It's got a number on the bottom. I'll have to look up the number. Look at this. 
Look at this. What kind of dog is that? That's some big old ears. I mean, the body is not right for it to be a dachshund. But that's some big old ears. And, and it actually has the babies. A lot of times you find the, the baby separate or you find the mother and you don't find all three. Now, only one of them still got part of the chain on it. But the, the hook thing is there. You can replace the chain. But it's got the babies. Oh, isn't that so cute? Darn if I know what breed that is, though. And I've been selling dog figurines for a long time. What's that? Um, well, when it's a sale, I usually go for three. Okay. Um, but I just finished what was in the box. I'm just curious. I don't remember. I usually go to bed. Yeah, you usually go to bed. Um, so I'm probably going to be done in about 15 minutes because it's just so stinking cold right here. Okay. And, we, and we just finished, like, the last thing from out of the box. So he's been trying to be so very helpful. No, you're not getting him on camera. I'm trying to get him on camera. He doesn't want to be on camera. Nope. I'm trying. <laughs> the male boy, that was, that was Mike. That was my son. That was the nephew's son. <laughs> I keep trying to get him to come on. And, and nope. <laughs> Can't get him on camera. <laughs> he just doesn't want to be on camera. So. Good night, Katie. You rest up, hon. And I hope you feel better tomorrow. So, you'll give him a dollar to come on camera. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. <laughs> Put that over there. Oh, all this tissue paper. Go see. Uh, let see. That was the boxer. I'll tuck these in here for safekeeping because... I already had to chase the doctor off the top of this box because she would lay it on top of it. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that's that's the box. We'll put we'll put the wrapping paper in the top. Send everybody back in. Yeah, because that's empty now. Put that in the trash bag, and we'll put that on top so she can't get in there two dollars then <laughs> oh perfecting pearls that's fantastic that they've gotten that uh, fundraiser has gotten up higher that's awesome because that's that's uh hard thing to be without water. <laughs> Philly Flipper, you do not have a face just for radio. <laughs> uh, I don't have a little sister to bribe, though I just found out that Sarah from Thrift U is actually two years younger than me. I told her I could make her my little sister. Does that mean I get to pick on her even more now? Oh, she needs 2000 not 200 Well, that's all right. But at least she's closer. She's closer to what she needs to get at that pump for her well. So that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. And at least in their description... Here, I'm going to see if I can copy this. So, on Dawn's channel, which isn't a channel I um, know about, they are having a fundraiser auction for 
someone who um, she hasn't had water for five days because the pump went in her well. And so they're trying to get her. Um, they're trying to get her the funds. And I could sympathize because I'm sitting here with no heat, but I've at least got water. I've got electric. I've got gas for the stove. The oven doesn't work because um, it needs the hoses replaced, which I don't know how to do. Mike doesn't know how to do. So, and, uh, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Just pray for warm March is what we're going to, but um, water, you can't, you can't go without water. And she's been without for five days already. So it says that if you want to donate, where'd it go? Um, in her description on Dawn's channel, which is actually what it's called, Dawn's channel. If you want to donate money or purchase any items tonight, send the money to her PayPal address. And he, they gave the email for the PayPal address. Now, I don't know this person, but I know what it's like to have life kick you in the <laughs> cojones. So I'm putting in her email. So if anybody here wants to just throw even just $5 their way um, to help her get that water pump so that they can get their well water again, there it is. I put it in. Now for my sale, my sale, Catherine, will be next week. And in March, um, we should go back to a sale every week. Um, uh, we'll see. <laughs> but I will do next week, I will have whatever Easter stuff I have. Um, I do, I do have... I can also show you these little goodies because I found these and it looks like they might all be by the, at least these two are made by the same maker because the way it's printed on the back and everything else, they were made in Germany slightly different. Excuse me, slightly different variants of an Easter lily. Um, uh, it looks like 1915 is the postmark on the back. So those will those will be uh, <laughs> those will be up on the um, on next week. And then I, I showed a couple other Easter things earlier. And I'll make sure that I have a, a video thrown up before the day, the morning of the sale of what I'm going to have. Because, you know, the more I move around, even though it might make my knee stiff, the warmer I'll be for now. You know, until we hear from Lyheap. But, you know, even, even putting in for Lyheap crisis, you're heading into the weekend. So I really doubt I'm going to hear anything until Monday because, you know, unless they get the ball moving a lot faster than most bureaucracies do. So, oh, so, you know, I've, like I said, I've at least got water. She doesn't even have water. I don't even know her, but she doesn't have water. You can't. With all the Boy Scout training I have, you can't go, your body can't go four days without water. That's the max. And then you start having problems with your liver and everything else. And it's such a basic need, but man, water gets expensive when you got to just keep buying gallons of it. So. Philly Flipper, honey, the biggest problem for a remote fireplace is where the hell am I putting it? The reason my hands are so cold in this room is because this room, there's nowhere. I've got only one plug over there and we have little space heaters. We've got them in the bedrooms uh, because um, here I can't, I, I don't want to risk plugging one of those space heater things into the same. I mean, I'd have to plug it into the power strip and that power strip already has the laptop, the phone, the light up there. And is the router on that one too? I think the router's on that as well. So I don't want to put those things that you're not supposed to plug them into power strips. You're supposed to plug them right into the wall. And I don't have a plug. <laughs> and right here, 
there's a blasted window that they didn't put in correctly when we got some of the windows replaced. So there's a little gap. Do we have any kind of heat? Only from those little oil-filled space heaters. And we've got three of them. So we've got one in each bedroom. And the inside of the house got pretty warm today. But like I said, I'm freezing right now because that blasted window, which I work tomorrow night and I work the next night. But um, we closed off some rooms today. We moved stuff around so that um, we put plastic up over the pantry doorway. So that's not causing any cold air to come in. We shut off the doorway to the dining room because that still has old windows. So that that's not putting more cold air leaching into the rest of the house. Um, I've shut the door to the playroom because that also has an exterior door that doesn't have a typical, um, it doesn't have a storm door to that porch door. It's an old screen door. So that does let in some cold air. So we shut that door off. And uh, when I go to bed tonight, I will shut off that door. There's an, another doorway there. This house is weird. There's all these odd little doors in places from when they added on in the 30s. And that'll cut off the cold air from this end of the living room because that stupid window being down that much. But we'll be getting to that this weekend because Mike still has off. And then I work tomorrow night and the next and uh yeah with propane heaters though you've got to make sure you have enough clear space which is not something i have in this room that's for sure but we'll get there we'll get it figured out um my like i said my uh, i i've put in for lie crisis we'll see what happens i've been trying for months to get to get help and uh over doored house yeah oh god i wonder how many doors are in this place um but i've been trying for months and um it's just a real challenge first off lie heap doesn't do anything in the summer you can know you have no heat in the summer they're not open they don't take anything and then it became a challenge of um for us to get oil, they said I had $50 too much if I claimed my brother on his Social Security disability and his pension. $50 too much to get help with oil. Now, I've made even less, so that would change it all. But at this point, it's like, I, don't, don't give me that crap. We'd have no heat. Help. <laughs> so... I do have another phone number to call for community action, but their thing said is that I had to get the paperwork into LIHEAP first before they could try to start promoting and helping move it along. And I'll tell you, getting an answer from them was a hell of a lot faster than getting anybody real person and then not getting disconnected from LIHEAP. Can I believe the prices they're charging in Texas? No, but that's Texas is deregulated. People don't realize that some regulations are there to help keep costs at a set medium lower price. So an overdoored house. You know, I'm still thinking about that Philly flipper. So door to the powder room, door to the porch, door to the, the back hallway into the playroom. There's a door to these two hallways. This doorway doesn't have a door. The doorways at the end of the living room and at the far end of the dining room don't have doors, but they have curtain rods that uh, we used to have curtains over them when we were kids. Mom always put heavy curtains up so it would stop the cold air when you open the front door from going into, um, into the rooms in the house. So, yeah. It's like trying to figure out windows. When my mom first went to Window Pro to replace some of the windows in the house, they said, oh, we have standard sizes. It won't be a big deal. And she said, no, no, you're going to need to come measure because it's an older house. Well, when they got done measuring, there are no two windows in this entire house that are the same size. They're the closest to are half an, and I don't even know which two they were, but the closest two 
are half an inch difference. And they're, they're probably on the front of the house, but the closest two are within half an inch of each other in size. And there's a lot, a lot of friggin' windows. <laughs> and almost all of them have been replaced with newer ones that are more energy efficient. But the last two, they came in, they got here so late in the day, they did them at night. And they're supposed to be lifetime warranty, but I have not found the paperwork. And that one, the actual framing of it, where it meets the frame of the house, there's a little teeny gap. And then this one's not in right because the pieces don't line up right to be able to lock the to lock the window. So it's cold right here, Philly Flipper, because the window isn't shut. There's a little gap at the top, which is why we were working on shutting doors off. And in the dining room, none of the windows in there are replaced simply because of the type of long window it is. Um it'd be real expensive to replace that sucker because you know some some old houses instead of having a window that goes this way in the dining rooms they'd have some long thing that went this way some of them would have had stained glass in them which would have been really cool but this house was built for a quaker who didn't want any ornamentation so there's no fancy stained glass window here <laughs> what a pity <laughs> So, but yeah, there's, there's heat in the bedrooms because we've each got one of these little oil filled space heaters and they heat up pretty good. Um, but it's just, you know, right now I'm in the coldest spot in the house because of that blasted window, but we'll be working on that. Cause like the tables here, there's stuff under the table. There's a platform rocker in the way and stuff in between the platform rocker and a big filing cabinet. So Mike still has a couple days off. So we'll be working on getting that to that. And uh, I've done my, I've done everything I can for phone calls. That was my entire day wasted. So I will spend tomorrow packing. It'll probably be warmer on the third floor anyway. <laughs> Heat rises, right? So... Anybody have any questions for tonight? Because that's it for the unboxing. There's a lot of great puppies that we found. And I'll, uh, I'll make some choices about whether they're going to be in the eBay store or whether they're going to be. Some of them I know I'm definitely going to have at, at the live sale. I think I'll definitely have that puppy, uh, the little white. Scotty Dog's cute, but I think I'll definitely have him. I'll pry both planters, and I'll see what I'm going to do about some of the boxers. So. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, hoping it has to be a little warmer by the time we get to next week, because, you know, my sales usually run three hours, and <laughs> I don't want to be frozen by then. <laughs> <laughs> so I started a little after 11 so I've gone like an hour and a half which is shorter than usual but those darn Quakers yeah well <laughs> but it's my parents were only the second owners of the house so Philly Flipper there's still some stuff that's original to the house the problem is, is that Dad never really did things to the house, but dad did things to the house. So good night, Belinda. Um, and, and Philly Flipper, you haven't been here for it, but this archway that you see above me, this is brick underneath this plaster. That's where the 1911 part of the house used to stop. And then I'm sitting, I'm sitting three feet in from that thing so i'm in the 1935 part of the house that they added on to Catherine, next week on thursday night same time same bat time same bat well for us it's night owl so same owl time same owl channel um at 11 p.m next week will be the sale that'll be the the live sale okay so Unless anybody has any questions for me about the house or how other things were going, 
things were going well until we ran out of heat. <laughs> well, we knew it was a, we knew it was a risk, but was really hoping. Next Thursday is supposed to be 55 degrees. That would be cool. Today got warm enough that yeah, outside was warmer than the house. Yeah, I have plastic over some of the old windows. Like the the playroom has a door that goes to a porch. And um, that old screen door has plastic over it. And I've done that with the kitchen screen door, even though that has that has storm windows that fit in it, but they're plexiglass because my father got sick of my brothers like banging it and breaking the glass. So he put plexiglass in it. So, uh, Catherine, I'm not sure what what's California time. So if it's 11 p.m. Eastern time. How many hours behind us is California? Because we're opposite ends here. I, sh I should know this because my brother's in California, my brother Steve, but I never remember. And it, so it'd be 8. Thank you, Philly Flipper. So, Catherine, it'd be 8 p.m. your time. So... Eight, nine, ten, lay yeah, three hours. Okay. I never remember if it's three or it's four. I always get that off kilter. Three hours. Okay. Hey, Lynn Dowdy. Hi. No, I have not forgotten you that you wanted the Afghan and the one apron. I have not forgotten. So. <sighs> oh. I haven't forgotten anybody. I've just been going nuts dealing with having the heater finally die. So I see Melissa. <laughs> yeah, Philly Flipper beat me to. <laughs> no weather gets warmer. I'm telling you, Philly Flipper. I'm coming over to eye up that warehouse and see how you have it organized. I'll help you out by telling you what porcelain stuff is really worth it and going checking out any old books you have you got a little bit of a lesson if you were here for it in old books because i showed some from the 1800s and showed some of the ways you could tell if a book's that old if you can't find a date inside of it i've been dealing with books for old, most of my life and actually used to help a friend um when he would go to the book shows Philly Flipper, don't give me that. I've seen your videos. You are more organized than Warehouse 13 here. Nah, -uh -uh. you are far more organized than Warehouse 13, which is what I've got behind me. Um, <laughs> so anybody who hasn't seen Philly Flipper, he buys, he's in my area and he buys um, storage units and you find some cool stuff. Most of it newer than what I am used, showing in my live sales. The stuff that he would have that's newer like that, when I get stuff like that, I throw it onto my eBay store, usually. So I have better luck with that there. So, so guys, that's everything. I'm going to say goodnight. And I'll see you guys next week, Thursday night. 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be a live sale. I'll have some vintage Easter stuff and we'll see what else I have. You saw a few things here that'll be in that. There'll be more of those coloring books. I've still got some of that stack to get through. So I'm going to get out of here and get out of the cold of this room. Go upstairs where it's warmer. Turn my little heater on. Let it start warming up my room while I see what my son wants, if he's still awake. And uh, so, yeah, I'll sleep tight under my wool blankets because, you know, I do that every winter anyway because I'm my bedroom's on the north side of the house, so it's always a little chilly in there. I'm going to take care and try to stay warm. You guys all stay safe, stay well, and uh, hopefully... February hasn't been kicking too many of you too hard. I know a lot of us, we talked about at the very beginning, February has been a really icky month for a lot of people. 
All right. So we only got a few more days of February and then it's gone. Okay. <laughs> then we got March and hopefully March, March, spring will be starting. Robins were in the yard today for the first time. So spring's got to come in. Right. <laughs> so you guys have a good night and I'll see some of you in the chats and some of you I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.